Hey, welcome to TMI Live number 21, the McLuhan Institute. As I continue the inventory of the library of Eric McLuhan, um, right now I'm into this uh, fat stack of Edward Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, in case you're new here, I am attempting to make an accounting and inventory of uh, Eric McLuhan's library, which is around 6,000 or so volumes. And I dedicate my evening on Tuesday nights uh, to doing so. Uh, so far, I'm around 500 entries in of the perhaps 6,000 books, so I'm making progress, and that's good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what I'm doing is, um, much as I did for Marshall's library, uh, several years ago, I'm making a basic accounting of uh, the bibliographic data of each book, uh, title, author, publisher, uh, condition of the book. But more importantly, I'm making an account of um, whether it contains any annotation, what type of annotation, to what degree. Some books have little and some books have a lot. I wasn't sure if um, this set of Gibbon would have anything, but... Um, it does, which is nice. The first thing it has is uh, something my father Eric and uh, something Marshall also did uh, a lot of times is uh, his name in the front of the book. Uh, T.E. McLuhan, Thomas Eric Marshall McLuhan, Toronto, Michael Mass, 1983. Uh, Michael Mass, Feast of St. Michael, happens around the end of September, I believe. Um, it's really handy uh, when Dad uh, or Marshall put the, the date and the place of purchase because it lets you know um, somewhat uh, where their interests were at the time. Um, and flipping through this book, I found uh, a few annotations, uh, margin notes, um, and then coming to the back, uh, a good few pages of notes, um, ruling passion, uh, Romans from 35 tribes, literate versus illiterate, uh, figuring ground, uh, right hemisphere, Persia, infiltration with Diocletian. Um, so what I will, abortion in Constantine, interesting. Um, so what I am going to do, <laughs> sorry again, 422, decline of arts and rise of dialectic after Diocletian, bracket oral RH, means right hemisphere of the brain. Um, what I'll do is I will make a note of these types of annotations in my inventory. So um, if there comes a time later when I want to find um, you know, Eric's annotations on, uh, for example, abortion Constantine, you know, I'll be able to search the database for it. That's not something I did as much with Marshalls and I regret it. So, um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just on the, the first book there. Um, but I did, uh, title this, the biography file, and I thought I'd, um, give you a look at um, a file I came across. This place is uh, rich or lousy, depending on how you, know, how, look, how you want to look at it, with uh, files and interesting material. This one um, uh, stood out to me because it's actually titled not biography, but autobiography. I thought autobiography, that's interesting. Uh, and there are different items in there, but I, I pulled this apart and gave it its own file because um, it's titled Autobiography, and it begins, The advantage of being born a Westerner is partly the unimpeded view that it provides of more densely settled areas. And um, to my surprise, I found that I was looking at a two-page autobiography by Marshall McLuhan. Uh, from sometime in the late 60s. It's not dated. 
and um, there isn't much more on it. Um, and I might as well tell you that um, with a little help from my friend Lee Nash and Picton at Invisible Press, we're doing a reproduction of this and we'll do a limited edition uh, and offer it for sale um, to help raise some money for the McLuhan Institute and for the work uh, I'm doing here. Not only with Dad's library, but also um, just preserving and bringing forward the work of Marshall and Eric McLuhan. Uh, which um, right now I'm mainly supported by um, people who've signed up for Patreon, and I'll uh, I'll pump that again because uh, you know it's helpful. Um, if you go to Patreon.com/McLuhan or you search for Andrew McLuhan on Patreon, you'll find uh, you'll find me, I hope, and a description of what I'm doing with the McLuhan Institute, and the opportunity to sign up for as low as a dollar a month. Um, which will uh, greatly help me and get you stuff like um, if you go to the Instagram or actually on the Facebook page for today, June, what is the day? Today is Tuesday the 4th, June 4th. Um, I was doing up a bunch of letters, uh, my first sort of newsletter, which I mailed out to everybody um, who's provided an address on the, the Patreon page. So. If you're one of those people, watch your mail, because I mailed them to get today. Um, and if you don't want things in the mail, you can let me know. Uh, and if you want to sign up for the newsletter and stuff like that, um, you can do it through uh, Patreon. So um, go ahead and do that. Um, and I've been known to send um, little goodies and bits and pieces along the way. Um, there are some other really neat things in this file which why don't we take a look at. Um, you never know what you're going to come across here or what something is. Um, this here has the name Corinne McLuhan at the top in her handwriting and copyright McLuhan Associates Limited. Excuse me. And at some point when Marshall started doing a lot of work, they formed, I guess on an accountant's advice, a limited uh, company called McLuhan Associates. and. Everything Marshall did, uh, the rights were assigned to McLuhan Associates. Anytime he gave a speech, McLuhan Associates received the fees and paid out Marshall. Um, and I suppose there were tax and whatever reasons for that. This is really interesting. Um, it's uh, half a dozen or more, seven, eight, nine pages type script. Uh, although this is a copy. Um, and it's a um, very curious account by Corinne McLuhan. Uh, I'll read a little bit of it. Quote, the special problems of women, unquote, an all-encompassing subject for, for the problems of women can be as specialized and as varied as the individuals themselves. So I shall discuss only a few related to retirement and widowhood. Um, I'll have to figure this out, but... I guess the title was The Special Problems of Women, and it was probably a magazine that asked uh, Corinne to contribute something, which was rare. Again, I can speak only from my own experience, and that is concerning my husband's retirement, which is hardly typical, but let's get on with it. As I have said, my case is hardly typical. When I was a little girl, my grandmother cautioned me, Honey, don't ever marry a man who comes home to lunch. So much for good advice. Just see what I did. I married an English professor who not only came home for lunch, but who was there for most of the day. As a matter of fact, our firstborn, when he was just a little boy, one morning approached his father, who was lying on the sofa reading, and, puzzled, said, Daddy, when are you going to get a job? That would be Eric. Of course, when my husband achieved a full-time secretary, he had to keep office hours, and I was at last a free woman for the first time in our married life, though I still chauffeured him to and from the university. It wasn't complete freedom, however, for I continued to do his proofreading, editing, and typing his private correspondence, as well as caring for the business details, all the necessary research and correspondence and filing. Uh, bracket, and I'm a, a complex, which interpreted means messy filer. 
I can attest to that. His retirement, quote unquote, began and ended within 15 months. It began with his stroke on September 26, 1979, and ended with his death on December 31st, 1980. It was a frustrating and agonizing period, which I must touch lightly, for it is still painful to dwell on. So this must have been written in the early, early 80s. There was massive left hemisphere damage, but his intellectual activity remained at its remarkable peak. It was an unbelievably frustrating and agonizing period because, although he remained physically active, he was left unable to speak, read, or write. His deep, unshakable faith supported him, and his marvelous sense of humor, his full enjoyment of good jokes, bad puns, and humorous cartoons kept him alive. I'll read just a little bit more. He went horseback riding for the disabled. We went for walks, rode our tandem, went out to dinner and to the theater. He had speech therapy regularly, but it served more for a distraction than the accomplishment of re-education. Nightly, we read aloud together two or three pages of the New Testament, he reading several verses aloud alone first, laboriously, haltingly, and, I suspect, largely from memory. But no matter how it was accomplished, the exercise caused him to verbalize, and that was very important to him and to us. It gave him a feeling of achievement, I hope, and perhaps a sense of progressing. I don't know, for he wasn't a man who could be easily fooled. That was his retirement period, ending with his death in the early morning hours of New Year's Eve. Uh, in any case, it goes on. Is uh, a very interesting uh, account by Corinne. I won't uh, sit here and just read the whole thing. Um, perhaps I'll uh, I'll publish it like the autobiography sometime. Um, a couple other things in the file. Um, there's uh, the official announcement here from Canada Post on uh, the Millennium Collection. Uh, this was produced in 1999 and uh, Marshall McLuhan got a stamp, uh, which you may have seen. And then there's a clipping here from University of Toronto Magazine. Um, there's some other odd bits. Um, seems to be a bit of a collection of biographical bits for, for Marshall. Um, this is a collection of uh, just a list of writings and some of his honorary um, degrees, biographical data. Um, and here I have, this is Corinne's writing, her listing of, of Marshall's works. Published books, anyway, and some other things coming up to uh, lists essential McLuhan ninety five, uh, eighty nine, ninety six. Here at the end, Marshall McLuhan escape to be published soon. Marshall McLuhan escape into understanding a biography by Terence Gordon nineteen ninety seven, with her note here approved. Uh, to be published, Marshall's PhD thesis, Thomas Nash, and the learning of his time, etc. Didn't get published for several years past that. Uh, mentions a collection of Marshall's writing on religion, etc. by Eric and Father Peter. That would be the medium of the light. Uh, asterisk. There is also a CD-ROM done by... Paul Benedetti, uh, Southam documentary done by Steph, Tom Wolfe narrating 1984. Uh, and then there's a, <coughs> excuse me. Corinne has also listed some of his lectures going back uh, awards. These seem to be notes uh, toward uh, a biography because she mentions idea consultants to market 
uh, couldn't copyright idea conference in Bahamas uh, some of the weird stuff Marshall came out with uh, lectures now this uh, I also posted a, a photo of this a picture of this on Instagram this is the idea consultant stationery uh, on which Karen has written some interesting notes. I'm just going to read them out. Should have inherited the practicality of Scotch and fayness of the Irish, but as a matter of fact, he was not by nature practical uh, and I think smothered any incipient fayness by his serious intellectual probings. He was a contradiction in terms, a born loner in his intellectual searching, but also he loved companionship, intelligent company. He did not suffer fools gladly. As a matter of fact, he did not suffer fools at all. <laughs> a lively, keen sense of the ridiculous, a lover of puns. When I would groan at some outrageous pun, he would retort that the pun was the most, uh, the highest sophisticated form of humor. He was a very religious man. He lived his religion. He visited the sick and elderly. He championed the underdog. But he was uncompromisingly hard on the pretentious, stupid, and lazy. He could be kind and gentle or totally abstracted aware only of intellectual activity. And there you have that. So some interesting little notes here. Where is my computer still asleep? Which means we're almost done here. Um, some more little biographical notes. Uh, understanding media three times, never revised. Harold McGraw met at Arden House on the Hudson, Vancouver Conference. Businesses sent execs for freshening up Vancouver Conference. That might be uh, a nod to when he first said the meeting is a message in 58. Um, these are just random biographical notes uh, here. Met. Pasadena Playhouse in 38. Uh, and that's when Marshall and, and Corinne met via Marshall's mother, who was Marsh, uh, Marshall's mother and Corinne were both at the Pasadena Playhouse in the late 30s. And uh, Marshall got kind of set up. Um, yeah, there's, sorry, there's a, a lot to go through here, and I can't read it all. There's a, anyway, as I said, I can't go through it. The one other thing I wanted to get to was uh, a file here. It says Carpenter Ted, uh, and then I'm going to get back to books. Um, and it contains a, a letter here from Ted Carpenter to Corinne McLuhan from 1995. Um, and it ties in a little bit to that because he mentions Paul Benedetti and the CD-ROM. Um, not. I'll, I'll protect the not so innocent by censoring names here. Uh, but uh, Ted didn't pull punches. Um, and in order to respect um, privacy, I'll not name names, but. Away from New York for a while, when we returned, I found a pile of faxes and messages requesting this and that for no less than three CD-ROMs, American, Japanese, Canadian, on Marshall. I ignored them, following the axiom, beware smiling reporters. They waste your time, work for the enemy, contribute only ignorance. But the most m recent memo is from uh, Paul Benedetti, saying you're involved with his Canadian effort. Yours is the first name I know or trust. I'll do whatever you suggest. Most writings about Marshall, pro and con, are non-recyclable trash. I wasn't impressed by 
<clears throat> biography, not up to the subject, not even two feet up, no understanding of, no interest in the ideas involved, and no hint of how much fun it was to be with Marshall. I've ignored this garbage with one exception. A couple of years ago, a Canadian little mag called Notes and Queries ran an inaccurate, mean-spirited article on explorations by Robert Fulford. I started a 10-word reply which quickly became non-stop 10,000. I met Fulford only once, a sluggish type as I recall, but I knew him from his writings, one of those Toronto columnists and broadcasters who took Woodside as model and sniped at the unfamiliar. Then suddenly, when he found he'd misjudged, he jumped aboard, a delayed pilgrim. A recent news clipping quoted Fulford's acceptance of an honorary degree from the U of T. He said circumstances prevented him from enrolling at the university, but his, he compensated for this by sitting in on classes by Innes, Marshall, and Underhill. In fact, he worked the opposite side of the street. I'm reminded of a poster I saw last month in the Ministry of Trade, Riyadh. Carpenter got around. Five stages of a successful project. Enthusiasm, disillusion, search for the guilty, punishment of the innocent, reward and honors to those not involved. Addie and I attended a lecture by Negroponte, MIT computer head, at the NY Public Library, followed by the editor of Wired. Both took Marshall as, quote, prophet and, quote, patron saint, their words, but what they said reminded me of C-minus efforts by second-year students at the U of T, 1950. As I walked from the library, I remembered a manuscript Marshall and I started in the early 60s but never finished. He proposed calling it Media Baedeker. I haven't looked at the MS in almost 30 years, but my guess is that it's only, only its title is dated, like a hidden book kept by Buddhist priests out of sight until an audience comes into being that MS might now have its audience. It will need work to finish, edit, illustrate, but could serve and serve well both general and classroom audiences. It also might make money. If you think the effort worth pursuing, I'll dig out the MS. I had boxes of this stuff, a miracle considering the life of wandering. The wandering continues, most recently Northern Greenland, Saudi Arabia, Siberia. Plan to return to Siberia this summer. The world is said to be getting warmer, but the last three seasons in the north were thwarted by ice problems. Uh, in any case, it, it goes on, but um, very interesting that he brings up the, the Baedeker project. Um, I would love to see that, and I don't know if uh, Carpenter's family kept any of those things. Maybe somebody watching this will know. I'd love to talk to them about it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to keep uh, going on books, and I wish you a great evening. You can reach me, Andrew, at the McLuhan Institute.com. Good night.